Okay, so I'm Robert. I do product planning for um, the Bobby L. Group, part of the marketing group in San Diego. Our headquarters used to be here in uh, Park Ridge, New Jersey, not too far away. I'm originally from Jersey. I uh, moved out to San Diego three years ago and I'm just starting to get used to the people out there in the West Coast. Next slide. <laughs> I don't want, you know, good point. It's not the site John Nell email monitors. <laughs> Alright, so this is uh, some of the design of the A10. Um, the design idea, um, next slide, is uh, what we're calling our monolith design. And um, it'll be kind of hard to see here, but there's kind of three main concepts behind the design of the set. One, the TV. We wanted to make sure that it looked beautiful both on and off, so, you know, having a great Sony picture when it's turned on, but also turned off having a very solid black look with uh, using uh, metal accents throughout. Something that's not going to overpower the room or really work. With the with the decor of the room and uh, and it being placed in, so that's kind of the thought behind our monolith design, having the full flat glass in the front. Um, it, all of our TVs, this is definitely a, a very Japanese thing, but uh, you know, if you happen to be in an urban dwelling, all of our uh, monolith designs have the ability to lean backwards six degrees. So if you happen to have a low piece of furniture, you can actually lean the set back by six degrees and actually improves the viewing angles when you're sitting on your couch. Uh, but most of us in America have high furniture and. Uh, big stand, so you're really not going to use that, but it's there. Next slide. Um, this set utilizes an optic contrast panel. So, what that means for us pretty much is that so you have the glass panel on top of the LCD panel, and what we've done to eliminate any light refraction and also uh, to give the appearance of the image coming off of the glass instead of behind the glass is that we've put a rear, uh, clear resin between the two. So, uh, it takes care of that air gap between both panels. Um, and I said it and, um, allows the light to escape uh, in a direct line versus being refracted out. You know, sometimes you look at certain TVs off to the side and it kind of looks like a double imaging with light breaking up. So we wanted to eliminate that using that type of pattern. So this is the NX810. This is some of the features, uh, some of the specs on it. It, it is 3D ready, which means that um, it's ready to go with 3D. There's 2D to 3D conversion. There's a 3D button right on the remote control. Uh, you add on a, uh, a optional emitter which is right down here, and glasses, and you're off and running. So if, uh, first and foremost, our 3D TVs, all our TVs are great high-definition TVs first. And I say that because we found in a lot of studies, you guys are all enthusiasts like me, you, you get it, you'd be surprised by the amount of people that feel that, it, you know, that if they buy a 3D TV, they have to put it next to their 2D TV in the house, like that it only does 3D. It's a huge misconception in the, uh, out there in the public, believe it or not. Um, tons of focus groups, and we're constantly being told that over and over again. So, um, it is a great 2D TV that happens to be 3D as well. It is 3D ready, ready to go. So the customer can purchase it, still get a great 240 hertz television set. A couple months down the road, they get into 3D gaming, or finally when an avatar, some movie that they really want to watch on 3D comes out, they can just go back at the emitter, and they're off and running, and they're ready to go in 3D. Uh, on that front too, the PS3 I just found out will have the update for 3D movies. It already has the gaming. Uh, I think that went live in June, which is about four or five 3D games that are already available in 3D. And then the uh, movie update for that will be in October. And we already have Blu-ray players that do 3D as well. Um, this TV utilizes Motion Flow Pro 240 hertz. Um, so you're probably very familiar with uh, the normal Motion Flow, meaning that um, you know where you, you originally had 60 hertz, the 120 hertz came along and created a brand new frame. And motion flow then creates three new frames in between the original frames. A couple of things that Sony does is we um, we bring in image blur enhance, uh, enhancements so that we can eliminate some of the blur that might be captured by the camera uh, at, a, say, a, a, a soccer game or a hockey game, which is kind of going quickly back and forth. And also any noise that may, might be in that original signal before we ever interpolate. So we want to interpolate a clean signal. Um, and by interpolating means like if you look at the soccer ball, you kind of look at where it starts off in the original frame and the last frame, and then the new frames actually will go ahead and determine where the, the planes are moving, both horizontal and vertical. So even if you have two planes going across in that particular TV show or movie, it can go ahead and interpolate that. Um, us being mostly movie purists here, we probably want to turn off that interpolation. I, I'm not crazy about it all the time, but it is there, um, and, it, and there is a lot of adjustments uh, in the set for turning off the interpolation, but still having the high frame rate to help with the judder. 
which I'm not too crazy about either. And even when I go to certain movie theaters, and you know, you get long pans. Um, I remember uh, some of the scenes from uh, last year's Speed Race when the, the talking faces, you know, the, the sports cast were going off the screen. It was just horrible. It was just choppy and, you know, real juddery. So we can help fix that without creating new frames. Next slide. So what 240 Hertz Pro does, because of the panel, it is an LCD, this is an edge LCD, and I'll talk about the panel in a minute. Um, we can utilize the panel to the effect and to um, help the the uh, interpolation, also the high frame rate even better by actually blinking off the LEDs. And what this in sense does, because LCD is a whole type of a display, it helps reset your eye. You can't see it, it's done incredibly quickly, but your brain does. And in, and when you quickly see, when your brain sees that kind of the turn off of the black, uh, that black frame, um, it actually helps eliminate the hold, the hold so it, it um, stops some of the blurring that you see. Really, the blur is caused by the brain seeing an image kind of being held across the screen. So if you hit it, it should kind of give you a rude um, explanation of how it works. You have the first frame, and then a quick flash, then the new frame, quick flash, and so on and so on. So you still have in the interpolation, but in between each of these subframes um, is the LCD, the, LC, uh, the LEDs uh, blinking. So let me talk a little bit about Sony's panels in general for this year, for 2010. We have three different types of LED panels um, in our LCD uh, TV sets. The first one is our edge lit. So uh, full edge, meaning that, um, not, not full array, but having the edges on the top and the bottom. Our 60 inch TVs that have edge lit are four sided. Mm -hmm. um, so this one, for example, is our dynamic edge. But So if you hit the, the next slide. Our dynamic edge LEDs, which is what this one is, um, still, this is a 55 inch, so it's still a top and bottom array. The 60 inch version will shoot all four, but they're in different segments. So it has large segment local dimming. So we do have some local dimming aspects with this particular TV set. Um, so one of the main reasons that when we came out with this was to actually, for power consumption purposes, realize that we can utilize that. Um, and then of course, there's some benefits as well for, for uh, black level performance and contrast. So depending on where, what you're on the screen, certain segments can actually kind of shut down. Um, our XBR909, which is our flagship piece, utilizes what we call intelligent dynamic LED, which is a full array, small segment local dimming. And how that's done is this tile here. Um, you've got a whole bunch of tiles in the back, and actually the LEDs are facing upwards, and then the light guy pushes them towards the screen. If um, anyone here remembers the XBR8, which uh, was a, a phenomenal TV set, the L LEDs were actually directly behind, mm -hmm. so it was a really fat set. It wasn't the thinnest set. And <coughs> incredible performance, but um, so we wanted to make sure that we can kind of squeeze that down into a form factor that people would consider slim. And that's one way that we were able to achieve that. So just a quick re recap, uh, Edge is Sorry. full on and off. Was, was that your question? Then, uh, go ahead. Next up is Dynamic Edge LED. Um, so like in this picture here where that steeple's kind of lit up, you have those LEDs behind uh, that particular screen which will be lit up and then the LEDs, the LED segments on the left-hand side will be shut down. Um, and um, this is just kind of a rough idea of just how they would work. Um, if you hit the button, it'll kind of turn the animation on a little bit. So you have much larger segments that you can control depending on the symbol here. Did that on the plane here. <laughs> um, and then the intelligent dynamic, which is in the XBR 909. Um, so we still we still do have full array, local dimming now. Um, hopefully next year we'll be able to get one of those in time for you guys to have. Uh, and so again, you have the light guide and all the different segments. And that's kind of how it works. Uh, we have a Bravi Engine 3 processor built into uh, VSAS. It does a couple of things besides um, you, you make sure that we can give you great uh, uniformity uh, with uh, color performance and contrasting, but it also does a lot with the IP content that's built into the TV set. Um, we'll talk about some of those things as well in just a minute. So it just makes sure that you're taking that you're taking that file that was originally meant to be played on the laptop on a 13 inch screen and blowing it up to a 16 inch. We want to try and make it look as best as possible. So our engine actually does that. Speaking of um, our internet capabilities, uh, the NX810 is Wi-Fi. Um, so out the box, you can either hook up Ethernet or you can go ahead and turn on the Wi-Fi capabilities and go onto your network. Um, 
we currently have about uh, almost 40 different web channels that are available. Obviously, the normals that everyone's got, you know, the Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, Twitters, but there's a lot of other ones, and they're kind of broken up into different clusters. So if you hit them up, so we, these are our premium partners. Um, anyone want to take a gander at what our most popular internet channel is? YouTube. Netflix. YouTube. I heard YouTube. That's number one. What's number two? Netflix. <laughs> no, not Netflix. No. Pandora. 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 Pandora and Netflix are always duking it up to the same place, which we were kind of quite surprised. It shows that t people are using their TVs as radio stations, as their radios, a lot more than we suspected. The numbers are huge. Um, and then, believe it or not, usually somewhere in that top five is, uh, is uh, Flickster, which is uh, movie trailers. So we see spikes like when the Tron trailer hit. There's a whole bunch of people look at the Tron trailer or uh, the new Harry Potter and that hit, so um, they're watching you know, new trailers on their TVs as well. Um, next one. So we have different clusters. We have uh, exclusive content that Sony offers. There's a Michael Jackson channel, there's a FIFA channel, and the World Cup is going on. We also can do, um, we've been doing uh, early early screens of films before they're available on DVD, so you can watch on, on our Broadway Internet channel. And then you can keep hitting it. So it's just, there's different, you know, where there be sports, uh, lifestyle channels, web videos, there's a lot of things besides just the normal stuff that we can offer that's already built in. All this stuff is all free content that's available the day you plug in and you go on live to the network. What's the bandwidth requirement? Um, about six megabits, we ask. Um, they are, uh, all of our IPTVs, like this one here, are DLNA enabled, so they will go ahead and get whatever content's opened up on your network, so there'll be photos, videos, and music. Uh, I can go ahead and get that so you can share it right at your living room and not have to go to your laptop. Uh, it also has renderer capabilities, so if you happen to have Windows 7, for example, you can actually send. So not only can it pull content, but it, you can also push content to the TV. So if you have your laptop and you want to show your family a, a birthday picture, you can actually right-click on that, and it'll just say send to the Bravia, and it'll pop up on the screen. Uh, as far as 3D goes, um, Sony says is we own. We're, we're pretty much the only company that's, that's into every single aspect of 3D. And so we have a real big knowledge transfer of what we do in the broadcast side and the motion picture side and how we can deliver that in our hardware and software and duplication. Um, in every aspect of 3D, we, we're there uh, and we're leading the way with that. So, um, you know, we have, we, we have our gaming, we have movies that we do. Uh, probably with a chance to meet balls is that on Blu-ray that's available. Monster, Monster House comes out in two weeks and we have some other titles. Um, you know, James Cameron used a Sony camera to shoot Avatar. Even, even our image work system, which did Alice in Wonderland and converted that. So we, we try and take use of what technical aspects we have in Hollywood to try and make our hardware better as well. Um, this is a, um, we, oh, we, for any uh, budding filmmakers, we even offer a, uh, we have a 3D technology center at Culver City. So if you wanted to come to Sony, it's a free course with some of the best cinematographers in the country, in the country teaching you how to shoot 3D, how to stage, and it's all done in our studio as well. It's a pretty cool course if you ever get to California. If you want to come check it out, you can totally do it. It's completely free. Um, we're uh, announced, we announced at C, uh, CES this past year a 24-7 video ch uh, channel coming to satellite and cable uh, next year with IMAX and Discovery Channel. So it's 24-7 3D content um, that we're working with them. So that's going to be coming pretty soon. We really want to make sure that uh, you, know, you can't, you have the hardware, but you got to have some to watch on it. So we're trying to do our best to make that happen. Um, you can hit the next one. We're on the time. The, like I said, the NX810 is 3D ready. So all you need is the emitter and glasses. We do have models that are 3D built in, so the emitter is already built in. Um, so it gives the customer the option to ready to go that day they can. Um, one of the cool things about having the emitter is that it also helps with placement in the room so that you can make sure that everywhere, anywhere you sit in the room, regardless of what angle you're at, you're always going to get a great signal from uh, the emitters when you're, you know, you're sitting there with your glasses. You don't need to be directly in front of the TV set. Like some other models, you really have a lot more flexibility and placement. What's the angle on your emitter? Um, the range of it? The angle, we, we've gotten pretty much almost at, um, almost about full spectrum. I mean, we've, we've gotten as far as 50 feet away and uh, about 70, 60 degrees off to the sides at least. Yeah, it's pretty wide. There's 15 emitters that are built into, uh, there's 15 IRs spinning out out of, out of the emitter, so it's pretty robust. And that is it.